Hi, I'm Chris Clark with Egg Source Laboratories and I'm today here to show you how we partner with Horny Buck Seed um, with the soil test kits that they use. And soil testing, as Doug will tell you, is pretty much the first thing you have to do when you decide that you want to do a food plot um, on anywhere on your land. Or if you have a current food plot and you've never tested it, don't guess on what kind of fertilizer you have or need to put out um, and turn in your soil test. So once you request the kit, it will come in the mail to you and inside you'll have um, your soil bag so you can fill out the information on that if you already know the names of your plots and um, have that ready to go when you head out into the um, field to collect your soil sample. What's really nice is because unlike me who goes out and takes a lot of soil samples it gives you directions of um, how to pull a good soil sample. There's um, several steps explaining you know, small tools that you might need, like a, a spade or a shovel, just to get down a good amount of um, depth, about six inches will be good to take your soil sample. And then directions on how to fill out the form um, and then mail it back to the laboratory. Inside you will have your form and it's really important to put as much information as you can on there. What we have found a little bit with some of the food plot is that we get your billing address but that may not be where your food plot is actually located. So if down on the bottom, if you can call an extension person or you can look up online or in some different um, documentations and actually find out what type of soil type is where your plot is, because if you don't list that, it's gonna default to where you live. And we have people that live in the city and we know that's not the food plot soil that you have. So please try and provide as much information as you can on the bottom. Um, however you want it named so that you will remember because you won't get this form back. Um, and it should match with what you put on the soil form. And then the number of samples that you have, um, you could have one to several more. So if you need to list more on a separate sheet, you can. Um, you would check the information of what food plot seed you're putting in and then what you had in it last year. If it's a new plot, just you can write that it's a new plot. Um, once again, try and look up that soil type because we do provide better recommendations if you have the soil type listed and it does matter with that. And then any type of the um, uh, management that you've done for plowing and um, that kind of information. And then there's a prepaid mailer. There are envelopes or boxes in there and then you box it up. If you have more than one sample, just cut the, the sticker off and stick it onto a bigger box and then you can um, send it off to the laboratory. Once it arrives at, once your soil sample um, arrives at the laboratory, I wish I could take you to the lab and show you that kind of stuff, um, but we will process the information both on your form and match it up with the bag, and then they get a um, laboratory number, and then we don't know who owns it after that. Um, there are several different machines that we run the different analysis on, so the typical food plot analysis is going to test for organic matter. That's going to tell you how much um, of the old food plot and then um, any other decaying stuff in the soil is um, present and that's kind of like a good source of nitrogen for your current um, crop or your new seedlings. And then it's going to also test for phosphorus and potassium. It's going to also give you a very important pH reading and then um, you can request additional tests beyond that. Um, a lot of people are doing a test for sulfur which is um, very helpful and then some people also like to add in it, that's the typical package of calcium and magnesium, which also will help you with your cation exchange. Those people are maybe a little bit more advanced in their science of cropping, but don't feel bad. It will provide you more information the more that you test. Um, it will take about two to three um, days once it arrives at the lab for you to get your results. Usually that's, it's within 48 hours unless it arrives on a Friday. Um, if you provide an email address, that will be emailed um, back to you. If you don't have an email, um, we'll just um, regular mail back the report to you. All right, we're in beautiful northern Wisconsin today, and one of the key things this time of the year, any time of the year, is to make sure that you have a recent soil sample on your plot. So I happen to be a professional, so I have a um, soil probe with me today, but anything will work from a small garden trowel to a larger spade shovel. You just want to make sure that you're getting down about five to six inches. And um, we've got pretty good conditions here today. I'm going to twist it a little bit because that will get out this nice, beautiful soil core. 
and I've brought with me my soil bag from the soil kit. And we're going to walk around this plot today. This is um, one of the plots that we're going to be sampling. I'm going to scrape out the soil core into the bag. And we're going to try and get um, 15 to 20 cores throughout this plot. And no um, soil sample should represent more than five acres. And we don't have that problem today here. So I'm going to zigzag throughout the plot and um, mix all those samples together and then um, put that in the bag to submit to the laboratory for analysis. Well, Doug, here's your soil report um, from your two samples that you sent in. Um, we have your customer information on the top, and then um, in the middle, this is also stuff that showed up on your um, soil form and your soil bag. And so the more information that we have there, we can fill that in. Um, what we have here is for the, the tagged out um, food plot that we're at today, it is um, showing that we do need some potassium and some phosphorus. Um, and we're still working on the pH at this plot too. So he's, he's decided to kill off this plot and actually till it in, which is going to be great because this field only has a 1.7% organic matter. Most soils in Wisconsin are at 3 to 5%. So it is a good idea that he's decided to increase this. What that organic matter is going to do is it's going to provide extra um, nitrogen throughout the year and it's going to make all the soil life that we can't see without a microscope except for worms and bugs a lot happier because they're going to have some fresh organic matter to, to eat and break down and then that creates more nutrients for the next plot that he's going to plant here and this was an old logging landing site so i mean there was a lot of bark and there was a lot of things in here that you know really mystically we pushed off and kind of made it a little bit bigger but um i'm sh shocked at how good this actually came in for what we have left, but I like the thought of putting that back in the soil. Manure crop, basically. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it, it's an investment in your land, um, and it's a slow process to, to build your organic matter, just like it is to change your pH. So the other thing is, he, the pH at this plot is at 6.4. That's okay for most food plot crops, um, but he does want to kind of up it a little bit. So he's going to continue with um, his liquid lime. Correct. Um, to try and get that a little bit closer to seven. So part of the reason for why is pH so important is I brought just a little diagram to show um, Doug today is most food plot crops are over here at a six to 6.3. Most of the seeds that you would buy from Hornybuck seed, they will, they will do okay um, in those ranges. But some of his mixes do have alfalfa and different um, brassicas and they like to get up to about a 6.8. And what we're showing here are all the important nutrients that are in the soil that can be tested um, in a laboratory. The skinnier that the band gets, so this is at a lower pH, and we do have soils that will get down to a 5.7 um, and below, that the nutrients aren't available, even if you are fertilizing for them, because the soil is hanging on to them and the, and the, the food plot crop can't get it. So it is really to your advantage to try and get to the middle of that 6.5 um, to 7 is going to make it where most of the nutrients are available. It's going to make your job of fertilizing and feeding your food plot a lot easier. Awesome. I mean, that's, I mean, that's why we wanted Chris to come to explain this because a lot of, I get these calls all the time. People call me, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And I said, do you do a soil test? Well, what's that? You know, and people don't understand how valuable your pH is to, you know, and I don't care what state you're in. I mean, I, we deal with people from Georgia all the way to Dakotas. So, you know, I, it, it all starts with this, you know, it's easy to do, you know, obviously she showed you that, um, send it in and, and start off. For, it's the best 18 bucks, 20 bucks you're going to spend. That's how I look at it. Um, at least, you know, you're not just throwing, you know, stuff at a wall and hoping it sticks, you know, so, but I mean, it's good information for us as a whole, for everybody. And I think this is a good way to start. That's how I start all my food plots, you know, which obviously, you know. Okay. So Chris, uh, 
the soil test here says a pH of 6.3, so with a brassica blend, a turnip blend, what would you recommend for pH adjustment? Well, how much lime? Yeah, so he's he's decided to kill off this plot, and um, so we're going to make, um, and he has previously done lime applications, which almost all of your food plots will need lime applications. Mm -hmm. And we've got a really great new product um, that's a liquid lime, and so we're going to recommend that he puts on One a gallon, gallon at the, the product label at, on this plot to help. And um, he's going to explain why the liquid lime is going to be really beneficial to that new seeding of brassicas. So the liquid lime is going to be highly reactive. It's going to work right away. And I just I just wanted to show, I don't know if you can see this on there, but but the roots, I just pulled this out of the ground and you can see the roots are only about you know an inch deep. Uh, we, we highly recommend that you spray the liquid lime right after you till it so that we're going to affect that top inch. And again, the recommendation was for approximately 1,500 pounds of, of conventional lime out here to bring it up to seven. Uh, to help the brassicas blend that we're putting out here. A gallon of lime is going to be all that we're going to need to do. And again, put it in the top inch, we're going to affect the root zone, which is exactly what we want to do. So that's going to be a great way to start the plot. So Kenton, how can we replace 1,500 pounds of dry lime with one gallon of our liquid lime? Simply put, it's just availability uh, and reaction speed. Uh, the particle size in the liquid lime is just much smaller than that of ag lime or pell lime. Uh, it's the same calcium carbonate, it's just much, much smaller. So they always say particle size and purity in any calcium product um, in terms of reactivity in the soil, the smaller, the faster it's going to go. And, and the stuff that we have is, is extremely small, um, you know, microscopic. So it is going to go to work today. Um, we'll spray it here in just a little bit. As soon as we get it on the soil uh, and it makes contact, it's going to work. We'll be ready to seed within hours. So, yep. so we're going to till the plot first and then soil apply that line. Correct. Okay, great. now uh, as you can see they tilled the plot they went over the soil test and there was a lime recommendation so we'll show you the proper way to do the plot doctor liquid lime first of all you want to take out the screen in any sprayer that you have take out the screen all right the number one thing that we need you guys to do before you spray the liquid lime is to take the filter out the bottom of your sprayer here and I'm going to show you how to do that right now just close the ball valve to your tank before you start on screwing it so you don't leak uh, what's in your tank out just remove this hose and you guys probably didn't know it existed but there is a little inline filter right here you're going to want to take out. I happen to have a Leatherman with me you can usually just pull them out with your finger or stick or whatever. That guy right there. Take it out for problem free spraying. Um, it'll make your, your life a lot easier guys. Then all you do is just screw this back on, open the valve, you're ready to go. Shake the bottle up. I always like to take a five gallon pail, have about two gallons of water in the pail, and then uh, grab a stick from the woods and just simply dump the lime into the pail. So you're going to make a nice loose slurry. That will allow it to, uh, to spray through a lot easier and it won't settle in the bottom of your, uh, your tank right away. That's it. Simply mix it in the water, dump it into the sprayer tank, and go ahead and apply it. Make sure that you put the water in the tank before you put this in. Um, put yeah, we, we have a couple of gallons of water in the tank already, so you want to do that so it doesn't all settle to the bottom. Mix your slurry, dump your slurry into the tank, and then top it off with either liquid fertilizer or, or water to fill your sprayer, and you're good to go. We're going to go ahead and put it in the tank, and we'll get started.
Okay, um, on this pot that we just got done uh, tilling and spraying, we're going to switch it back over to Tankalicious. We had tagged out in it last year. Um, this is actually named after good old Tank here. And actually, we're going to let him seed it this year. But I'm going to show you a little bit about how we seed and how I seed. Um, I'm not telling anybody how to do it. You do it whatever way works best for you. I'm just going to explain to you the way that we usually do it. Um, so we're going to put the seed in, and then we're going to put the... Uh, spray uh, spread on fertilizer in here and we'll show you how to do that so Kenton if you want to come and yep. add that on so uh, Doug just put the seed in and uh, what we're putting in here after is, is just a plot doctor dry uh, it's a 6465 I know a lot of guys say you know phosphorus is sky high on my soil sample um, what we have found is a lot of that is not available to the plant especially right away when we put the seed down so that's why we do this particular mix um, to help the seed germinate uh, Doug seed germinates great all by itself but this is just a little bit of a of a bonus so uh, we go ahead and we actually put that right in with the seed it gets spread out with the seed kill two birds with one stone it's really easy Ready to go. All right, Tank, you're up, buddy. Okay, here's, I usually use an Earthway cedar bag. Um, there's several different types. Uh, for me, it's all about, I seed with my ears more so than anything. Um, so what I do is I'm always listening to the seed. So one thing that I'll, I'll do is I use my finger, obviously, to open up the thing. And there is, some of them have stoppers on them. If you feel comfortable putting your stopper on, that's up to you. Um, but I usually don't. Um, so in other words, when I'm seeding, I want to just hear just a tick. So when you hear a tick like that, that's fine. You don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear. You don't want to hear it going all over. Okay. So you just want to hear ticking and just keep walking as you're ticking. I usually go back and forth and then I'll cross hatch it more or less. Okay. So that's how I seed, but I'm going to let Tyler seed this. Hopefully we'll see how he turns out. And if he does go a little bit chart, we do have extra seeds. So we're good. So just letting you guys know. Okay. Hey guys, I'm Steve Tatro from TIP Agro Solutions uh, Plot Doctor, and uh, today we're going to talk about our, our line of fertility products. And uh, if you guys need to purchase any of the products, you can go to hornybuckseed.com, uh, click on there to their online store, and be happy to find it there. Also, uh, Plot Doctor on Facebook. If you like us on Facebook, you can find us there. Uh, I'll turn it over to Kenton. He'll uh, explain some of the products. Thanks, Steve. Uh, I am Kenton, agronomist uh, with Plot Doctor and Agro Solutions. Want to simplify the process here for you and just go through it. Uh, so we've made this a three-step process for you. We have four products, but it's really a three-step process. Uh, first thing we want to do is look at a soil sample. Take a soil sample after you find out what the pH is. That's why we've got the liquid line. Uh, we tell guys that uh, this one gallon is equivalent to approximately 2,000 pounds of your ag line. Uh, it is extremely easy to spray after you have tilled your plot. Um, I know a lot of guys even do put it out with their herbicide burn down before they uh, plow or till their plot. That works also. Uh, either way, we need to make soil contact for it to work. But once you get your pH figured out, uh, we can make a recommendation or any of the Hornibach uh, pro staff guys can make a re recommendation on how much liquid lime you have to do. That's step number one. Step number two is going to be seeding and then also uh, making sure that that seed has the energy to both germinate and to establish a root system so that it gets off to the best start that it possibly can. Plot Dr. Dry is going to help you do that. Uh, it is a 6465 analysis. Uh, more importantly, it is a available phosphorus product. I know there's been a lot of talk about that. Uh, a lot of phosphorus is high and a lot of soil sample guys don't think that they have to put it out. Uh, we have found that it is still best to put some phosphorus out. We're only putting out a pound uh, 
basically per quarter acre with this bottle, so it's not a lot of product, but again, it is highly available. Helps the plant get off to a good start, uh, and that's really where it, uh, it all does start, is in uh, that beginning uh, portion of the season. That's step number two. And then step number three is going to be uh, one of two products. Uh, Steve's gonna explain the Tandem Pro here in a sec. Plot Doctor Liquid, this small bottle right here. If you are going out and treating over the top of any food plot, either by itself, just nutritionally to feed it, or you're spraying herbicide, put this in the tank with it. Um, it is a 9189 fertility product uh, meant to foliar feed, safely foliar feed any type of a plot uh, over the top. And like I said, it is 100% safe to spray with uh, glyphosate, Roundup. Um, if you're out there killing weeds at the same time, you can weed and feed at the same time. Uh, Steve's going to explain to you uh, the Tandem Pro. That's just basically another formulation that we would use as a liquid. Uh, it is more of a soil application. This is not a foliar. Um, but again, uh, Steve, if you want to just explain sure. uh, a couple different uh, reasons why we would use that. And that is a newer product. Yeah, it's a new product for this year, uh, more for your brassicas, your turnips, your rapes, kales, those type of, of uh, plants that require more nitrogen through the growing cycle, uh, and uh, they can't fix their own nitrogen. So well, in, in this jug is uh, uh, controlled release nitrogen, along with your other nutrients. It's a 22221, so you do get a unit of sulfur as well. So it uh, gets those plants off to a great start, and with the controlled release nitrogen, you get a consistent feed throughout that growing cycle. So. Again, the Tandem Pro Liquid is available through the Hornibuck Seed Guys uh, or uh, Plot Doctor. And that is our program. Start with uh, good quality seed and you use available good quality fertility, you're going to end up with a good quality plot that you're going to be happy and proud of and hopefully uh, kill something nice uh, uh, off of. So that's, uh, again, the simple program that we put together with Hornibuck Seed.